The two things that everybody needs in life to survive that no one ever talks about are sex, right? And, and money. interrupt our program to bring you this important message. If you're a real estate agent right now, or if you're looking to get into the real estate business, I'm gonna give you an exclusive inside look into how I run my entire operation and to how I sell roughly uh, $75 million worth of real estate every single month. Sign up and be one of the first people to get my course when it comes out in August, let's go. Uh, you recording, you recording? We gotta figure out what to do for today's vlog. Joe, Adrian! Wow, this is weird. Yeah, I got your camera. Vlogception, wow. Vlogception. Kind yes. Of, what's up? All right, you do this now. I got you. So we have a conference tonight. I'm speaking on a panel at the SoFi Goal Getters Conference all about personal wealth, personal growth, how to make more money, how to save money, all that stuff. So that's gonna be in this vlog, so get ready. It's gonna be amazing tonight. I mean, assuming, you know, I don't die. Hundreds of kids are gonna be there. Is that what the vlog should be about or should it be about? I think it should be a bit edgy, like. Edgy? Adrian wants edgy. You know what's edgy? Things that are in focus. What do you think? Um, we should do edgy. What if we talked about things that people don't like talking about, like um, like sex, like money and sex. Just combine those things from the edge. Sex, like intercourse? No, 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 I just feel like if you want to grab these kids' attention, yep. that's a quick, easy way to grab their attention, and it's two things sex. that everyone talks about. Why do you about. talk about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you always tell me about it. Don't you, what, what do you say about it? Say so the two things that everyone needs to survive, right. which are sex and money, like you ask anybody like, hey, how's your sex and money life? Everyone's like, oh, whoa, oh my, absolute, whoa. Would you, let's talk about what I watch on Netflix, not those things. Yeah, maybe we'll do that, so. I don't think schools like do a good job at it either. It's like very, like, they keep very general. I mean, yeah. I don't know. We were talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. impractical, it's not practical. Well, schools, I mean, let me say this though, like schools do have sex ed, right. okay? But that's just very much on the surface, safety first, which is important. And they do have, they do talk about money and they talk about, you have economics classes, calculus, algebra, geometry, but not right. like when I graduated college and got my first paycheck and I thought I was getting 800 bucks and I got $473. I remember being like, Medicare, Fika, like what, where's all my money that I just worked for per hour? What is this after tax thing? How do I save money? I can't live, on, what do I do? And so then I got into real estate. And by the way, an upcoming vlog is going to be how to become a real estate agent. The seven tips you need to know, the seven steps, it's coming up, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be huge. Make sure to keep watching the vlog, subscribe, link, you know what to do. Yeah, I remember my days at Hollister making like seven dollars or six seventy five an hour because that was minimum wage a few years ago. That's what I pay you, right? Basically no, no seven twenty five an hour. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's not he's not joking. Actually, I'm gonna talk about personal money for me, which is something I've never talked about ever. Like how much I make, how much I wanna make, and how I make it. That's something I've never spoken about, which makes me uncomfortable and weird, and I feel vulnerable. I guess that's the whole point of this vlog, feeling uncomfortable, weird, and vulnerable around the two things that you need to survive, which are sex and money. I have to actually go right now, and I gotta go change, I can't wear a t-shirt, I gotta look professional. I gotta go, you know what to do? Yeah, 7.25 an hour. You're the only one I'm missing Now me Take away the hole in my chest Where my heart was What do you think is like the one major roadblock that keeps people from reaching like their full potential on their career? Inconsistency. Okay. Quitting. Uh, honestly, I think that like people have no attention span anymore. If you want to become a lawyer, you go to law school and law school is for years. Like this is going to be your grad school. You want to learn how to sell real estate? Don't take a day off for three years. And by the end of it, if you do that, you will master it. And if you can't do that, then you won't. Sure. Thank you. 
looking at some of your questions and I'm looking at some of the questions we're going to talk about. And I know this is about personal finance and personal growth, but like we're, we're going to be super honest, right? Like about money and financials. Cause some of these things are about like financial goals. Like I want to put that out there that everything we're going to talk about, like I'm, I won't hold back. Um, and there's no bullshit out of my mouth. And like the two things that people like the two things that everybody needs in life to survive that no one ever talks about are sex, right? And, and money. Like the two things, like no one talks, like when you're a little kid, it's like the two things that don't exist. You don't talk about how much money your parents make unless there's problems, right? And you definitely don't talk about sex. How are those two things going for you? <laughs> I'm kidding, that's not what I'm start, but I appreciate uh, the honesty and I think that's a great place to start. No, I mean, listen, uh, I mean, practice one is also is watch what you spend. Right? So the minute you start making any money is, is watch what you spend. So whether it's on Uber or whether it's on things that you just don't use, it's amazing how much money we spend because it's so easy to spend money now. Because it's all our credit cards are locked into the phones and you don't even think about it. You don't even realize that that was $2. And then it's like it adds up, right? And it goes from there. Um, two, I think you, you have to spend money to make money. So it's watch what you spend, but it's also make sure you're spending money on things that are going to hopefully make you money, whether it's in, uh, you know, uh, whether it's the simple things like for me, which was when I first got into the business was I need to actually invest in some nice suits, right? I like my, I don't wear suits cause I like to, like honest, this is not comfortable for me. I'd wear sweat shorts and a t-shirt all day long if I could. I do this out of respect for the clients that are in front of me. So I want to have nice suits so that when I walk in a room, they know, okay, Ryan respects me. He shaved, he cut his hair, he's wearing a suit. Now we can focus on me. I'm the client. It's also investing into multiple things. So keeping as many balls in the air as possible, knowing that you shouldn't put all of your eggs in one basket. So it's taking a little bit here, putting it there, a little bit here, putting it there, a little bit here, putting it there, and then waiting and seeing which one is actually going to pop. So even if you have a hundred bucks to invest, it's finding, you know, it's finding 50 places to put a little bit of money and not just putting $100 all into one place. Um, saving for taxes is also another really huge one, right? Taxes are a real thing. Um, saving for taxes and being tax conscious um, is one. And then uh, working with people who are more financially literate than you. Right? I think that's probably my number five advice. Whether that person's in this room, whether it's SoFi, whether it's a banker or somebody that you know who you can trust, who will be unbiased, to talk to them and say, hey, listen, I've got a little extra cash. Should I be putting it into retirement? Should I be investing it? Should I be putting it into myself? What should I do? Having that person give you advice, which most of the time is not what you want to do with the money, it's what you shouldn't do with the money. I think that was five. You know, we sit in different places in our lives. What are your financial goals? What are my financial goals? Um, I spent $8 million on a house that I, that I have to pay for, right? Um, that is just an obscene number to me, right? Like you wanna talk honestly. First year I made $9,000, like 9,122 or something. But I made like a commitment to myself that you know what? Like anyone can do real estate sales. You can get off a boat and sell real estate in New York City. All you have to do is click on the internet for 72 hours or something like that. Um, and I was like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And every year I'm gonna double my income. Like that was my initial financial goal, just so you know, like where, you know, come from. So for me to now sit here, uh, 2009, so just over 10 years later, right? I bought my first apartment, I paid 3.7 for it, um, and that like nearly killed me. And I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. My parents thought I was crazy for buying a three bedroom apartment for almost $4 million. But I was like, you know what? I gotta back myself up against a financial wall. And that's the only way I'm gonna be able to move forward. Like the only way I think I was successful at the beginning of my career is because I legitimately had no money and my option was go home. So my back was up against the wall. And a lot of young agents who work with me and a lot of young people that I meet with all the time, they're like, I wanna make more money. I'm gonna see my mom on Sunday. Like she does my laundry and my parents are helping me out. And yeah, I got a job and it's cool, it's fine. Two years go by, four years go by. You're never really like up against that wall. So it's about figuring out, you know, how to put yourself up against that financial wall. And so that's what I do. So I bought a place for $3.7 million that I could not afford, you know? But I figured it out. I was like, in order to afford this, I have to sell X and I'm gonna figure it out. Last year, I had a, there's a townhouse listing I had on the market for $10 million. And the guy really, really needed to sell. 
and out of the whim, because he would call me every day, and he'd be like, you suck, you're the worst broker in the world, you're just this real estate TV guy, you can't even sell shit. He was really stressed out, and people yell at me all day long, and he was really, really upset. I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll pay a thousand bucks a foot, it's 7,600 square feet. He'll never do it, right, he'll never do it. He got really, really upset. Two weeks later, four in the morning, he texts me and says, how quickly can you close? I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so then I go to talk to Amelia, and I'm like, so we might have to buy a townhouse in Brooklyn. Um, but it's awesome, it's huge, and it would be a really, really good deal. And went and saw it, convinced her, she really, really liked it, um, bought it, put a tenant in place, and then had to figure it out, right? And now we're renovating it, the renovation's gonna cost me like 2.6. Um, and my financial goals this year, like income-wise, which I never talk about ever, because like I said, it's like one of those weird things. You know, like, and I, for me too, like talking about money is so strange because I distinctly remember going to the Food Emporium on 59th Street and First Avenue and getting my credit card declined buying groceries in the summer of 2008, and that's what pushed me to become a real estate agent because I, I didn't know what else to do or go home, right? And my, so for my team, my financial goal this year is to sell about $75 million worth of real estate a month, right? Which would be $900 million for the year. And so if I close on $900 million this year, which is a big number, right? If I close on $900 million this year, my gross commissions will be about 21 to $22 million. My average commission intake is like 2.3 to 2.4%, give or take. Um, and so personal take home for me, my goal this year is a million bucks a month, right? So that's my, and just being like dead honest, that's it. And next year, my goal will be to double it. You don't have to clap. I mean, it's like, I, you know, no one talks about money and it's crazy. And I talk about money all the time to my team and sit down with them and figure out like, you know, don't tell me how much money you want to, don't tell me how much you want to sell. Like, I don't care if you sold this or did this. Like, let's sit down and say, how much money do you want to make? How are you going to pay your fucking bills? How are you going to pay your rent? How are you going to pay the Con Ed bill? How are you going to pay your Netflix bill? Let's figure it out. How much do you then need to sell? And how are you going to sell that based on how many people you need to meet? An interesting thing to look at between the juxtaposition between like what we do, the athletes that you cover on these teams, right? They spend the majority of their time, maybe 95% of their entire year practicing, right? They practice 95% of the time. They're in games 5% of the time, okay? Salespeople in my world are in their mind in games 95% of the time and then they'll practice maybe if they get some time, but they're so busy, 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 busy. And then 10 years go by and they wonder why they're in the same exact position, right? Blows my mind. So every day I'm trying to like learn something new and do something new that'll help me make more money next year. And, I'm, and I have no shame in it. Like it's, it's 2019, it's the future. This is New York, it's the United States of America. Like this country was founded by people from, who said literally, they didn't like the way things were going on, so they got up, got on boats, and left. I don't have the balls to do that. Literally, like, it's, it's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, like that's, you know, stick-to-itiveness and think the, the power of showing up, I think it's probably my, my key to success and my advice for anybody else. Vlog's over, that's it, sorry. But you can still watch more. Maybe you can watch this one. Maybe you can watch this one. See, this one's pretty good. You should watch this one. Actually, you know what? This one seems pretty great. You should definitely watch this one. Actually, this one seems pretty good. Maybe you can watch both of them at the same time. Maybe try clicking like both.